Brian Windhorst just claimed the Warriors bought their way to a near championship, and before tip-off, ESPN's BPI was still giving the Celtics a 71% chance at winning the finals. It's absurd that Brian's pushing the money narrative when every one of the Dubs' top players were either drafted or traded for, and when his network said the Warriors would be a non-contending number 6 seed back in their preseason rankings. Falsely portraying the Dubs as a free agency juggernaut when everyone was salivating over the Lakers in 2021's offseason, realistically a 15-point Game 5 score who had the highest plus-minus on Monday night in Gary Payton II, fought his way onto the roster, and signed for the veterans' minimum last summer. While the Warriors paid the second-highest luxury tax only behind the Clippers, saying the Warriors' system and personnel from the coaching staff through to the front office is a result of having more money than other teams is extremely disrespectful. That's what Windhorse tried to claim. We'll get into the film room on my fellow Torontonian and Maple Jordan, but firstly, we have to call out the mainstream blasphemy being spewed right now. The full statement from Brian Windhorse directly after Game 5 of the Finals consisted of him saying on SportsCenter, speaking to millions across the globe, they have a $340 million payroll. You don't just have to beat the Warriors on the court, you gotta beat their checkbook. This was a checkbook win for the Warriors, end quote. Despite that statement from Wendy, fact of the matter is, money isn't the reason the Timberwolves have been a godsend for the Warrior franchise. Minnesota passed on Steph Curry twice in 2009's NBA draft. They turned down a trade for Klay Thompson involving Kevin Love directly before Golden State kicked off its dynasty back in 2014's offseason. But the best Twin City swindling from President Bob Myers, who doesn't get enough credit, was forcing Minnesota to trade them Andrew Wiggins and a first-round pick in exchange for D'Angelo Russell. Skipping ahead to the present day, and in 2022's finals, Andrew Wiggins is averaging more points per game than Klay Thompson, Air Canada leads both teams in rebounding, and defensively, he's also been stellar, leading both teams in shots contested while being second in blocks and holding Jason Tatum to just 37.5% shooting from the floor. From the underrated clamps of the Splash Brothers to Draymond's captainship when either blitzing, hedging, or playing drop coverage on ball screens, or how Steve Kerr mixes up his defensive coverages on the Jays, that's helped the Dubs keep the C's under 100 points in three games of this series. Everyone, including myself, was obsessing over Boston's defense during these playoffs entering the finals because Golden State had a much worse efficiency on that side throughout this postseason. What I didn't take into account was that whether it was against the Nuggets in the first round, the Grizzlies in the second, or the Mavericks in the conference finals, there wasn't a team that forced the best defensive effort out of these Warriors. Back in the regular season, Golden State ranked number one in defensive rating, which was tied with the Boston Celtics, a fact many seem to forget. Of course, the success of this first-class NBA best organization all starts and ends with the deadly off-ball motion, three-level scoring, not to mention top-notch vocal leadership from the two-way player in Stephen Curry, who combined with Wiggins to manipulate Boston's defense. Despite the chef failing to hit a three-pointer, going 0 for 9 from distance, he used his gravity to dish out a team-high eight assists, which created 18 points. Curry also had 10 potential assists, according to NBA.com, Taking into account the 16 he tallied himself, that means with the media obsessing over his bad shooting night, Curry still found a way to manufacture over 50% of Golden State's 104 points. Bonafide Finals MVP, and the most important person by far to this Warriors dynasty. With that said, it helps to have the floor spacing of his Flash Brother back, as after Game 5, Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson have now combined for 1,004 total three-pointers in their playoff careers. That's more than nine active franchises. The Hornets, Timberwolves, Pelicans, Kings, Wizards, Grizzlies, Knicks, Nets, and 76ers. For slowing down Curry, give credit to the Celtics' adjustment to be much more up on ball screens and all around being much more active on Warrior ball handlers, specifically that ball pressure picked up in the third quarter, and at one point, that forced the Warriors into missing 14 straight three-pointers until a Klay Thompson triple. Another weird three-point drought happened in this game as well, 
but for the opposing Celtics, who started 0 for 12 from three-point range, the Celtics' big three of Smart, Brown, and Tatum are shooting 25% from the field and 14% from three when guarded by Draymond. But now we have to break down Andrew's 26-point, 13-rebound, 2-steal, and 1-block masterclass he put up in a make-or-break Game 5 to help protect home court for the dubs at Chase. This possession sees Wiggs set a flare screen for Thompson, who makes the perfect outlet to Wiggins. And with all this momentum, most players would have tried to poster the Time Lord and gotten blocked, but Andrew intelligently stops on a dime and transitions to a teardrop. Boston shuts down this pick and roll between Clay and Dre, but after receiving the swing pass, Wiggins hesitates once to his left, once between his legs, drives to his right, and bodies off Tatum for a nasty mid-range fade. After a stagnant ISO from Jalen Brown, Wiggins shows off his anticipation, elusively making his way over to the weak side to swat Brown's shot, a perfect, timely rotation which swung momentum early on. Following this Tatum kickout, Andrew soundly presses up with his right lead foot on Horford, somehow staying on balance to spring right back to get right underneath Big Al and force him to clank a contested layup. Here, Wiggins shuts down consecutive Tatum pick and rolls within one possession, resulting in a Jalen Brown miss. Great closeout from Draymond as well. This face-up, triple jab step, back down shimmy, and polished fadeaway is the type of footwork and mid-range shooting chops which made him the number one ranked prospect throughout high school and college. Capping off the first half, Wiggins gets Derek White on an island, going to work with his footwork yet again, which was followed by Curry finding him in transition. However, it was how Maple Jordan closed it out in the fourth which was most noteworthy. Again, he attacks Derek White, this time in transition, and the combination of Andrew's speed, downhill momentum, stature, and hops are just too much to handle. This next play won't make the highlight reels as much as the dunk I'm about to show you, but here the Warriors run some ram screening into a low post split action, Boston doubles Steph around the screen, Steph finds Wiggins on the roll, and Wiggins finishes around Rob Williams. After Curry gets a screen, he kicks it out to Wiggins on the left side, and despite Horford doing a great job at sticking with him, this just shows off how much less of a vertical jump that Al has than Andrew, as Wiggs outsprings the Celtics' stretch big. The Time Lord was Maple's next victim, who he blows past, bumps off, and drops a floater on, pristine execution when it mattered most. But giving fans across all of America some much-needed Canadian content, Wiggs saved his best for last, as this high pick-and-roll near half sees Drew gain every bit of downhill momentum and throw down a mild poster in comparison to the one he laid on Luka Doncic around earlier. The pure hops from Andrew continue to be a problem for Boston to defend, and the scariest part about this performance if you're a Celtic fan is that my fellow Torontonian could have played a lot better, he missed a ton of open shots. In terms of players in the past, whether it's the current era or any time frame throughout league history, who does Andrew Wiggins remind you of? Two shoutouts next video. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.